<clears throat> okay, we are live. Let me run over here and shut my video off real quick. Hold on. Okay, so I am not seeing you connected at all. It It is. It's just we're on a delay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, and it's really windy here. So there you go. Let me make sure you're off here. Yep. So just pause the video. <clears throat> All right, you're paused. Awesome. All right, so we're live. It's gonna take it's gonna take a few minutes for people to start coming in. Um, so let me just pull my screen up real quick so I can get everything situated here. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Um. Okay. So let me pull this up. And close this out so people aren't like trying to get me on Facebook. And yeah, I should probably close off my Facebook too. Okay, so today we are talking about essential oils and chickens. This is going to be a pretty quick class because, um, you know, chickens are so far in depth that you could really just talk about it for forever. But, you know, a lot of people don't have issues with chickens, but then when you need something, you know, you want to, you want to be prepared for that. So, um, to everybody coming in, hello. Um, but today we're specifically talking about just a couple of common issues that chickens have. And then we're actually going to really encourage you. Um, Anne has, a book that I'll come back and link uh, if you're interested in it. It's, it's not cheap by any means, but if you're serious about it, you can certainly purchase it. Um, and then I have, you know, we, we encourage you to, if you're getting serious about essential oils to join our team, um, even if it's just a $35 membership, you don't have to sell anything. Um, and then you get access to our private Facebook group. So, and it is a homesteader essential oil Facebook group. So that if you have any homesteading related questions or you want to go more in depth with chickens and essential oils, um, that's really the place to join because that's what our focus is, is on is um, our team is called Team Farm Girl for a reason <laughs> uh, because our focus <laughs> is homesteading and farming. And so that's what our team is focused on. So um those are the first few disclaimers. The second disclaimer is we are not vets or medical professionals. So we do encourage you to use these um, suggestions to you uh, that we give you at your own risk. You know, do your own research. Uh, each animal is different and, you know, kind of go from there. Um, we can tell you things that have worked for us. We can tell you things that have worked scientifically. Um, but we can't make any guarantees, you know, every environment is different. Um, T. Teresa Flory just asked, does anyone know a home remedy for my cat's eye infection? I don't have cats. I have one. I'm coming right now. Hold on. I'm responding. Okay. So Anne's going to respond in the chat. <clears throat> um, all right, so we're going to get started. So welcome to the essential oils and chickens class. Um, today we are specifically talking about essential oils and chickens. We are talking about how to use them safely, um, you know, whether it's ingestion or topical or basic safety information that we can give you. Um, we are both strong advocates for nutrition and prevention first. So Anne and I are both very strong advocates for, um, for giving your chickens a natural diet and preventing a lot of stuff with herbs. Um, you can check my book out that comes out in April. I do talk about that with your livestock herbs. You can put in feed and waterers and stuff like that with prevention. And Anne and I both talk about that a lot. Um, the key to having healthy livestock is good diet and preventative herbs. Um, so that's a big, big key player. But we're not talking about today. We're, we're talking about what happens when, you know, something goes wrong and you, you need essential oils. So, the first thing is we need to go over some safety things. You know, how do we apply essential oils to our chickens? How are we giving it to them? And then we're also going to go through, minus the health part, we're going to give you some some fun recipes like um, chicken coop cleaner. Um, I'm going to give you an antibacterial ointment that you can, recipe that you can use. And then again, all these recipes, and there's a lot more recipes in my book too that you can check out. Um, okay. 
So the first things first is how to distribute essential oils to poultry best. And Anna and I actually, Anna and I actually kind of had this conversation really quickly before we came on. Um, because there's there's some debate, I guess, between do you put it in the water, do you do an eyedropper, do you do it topically? And um, I think Ann and I have both used essential oils all three ways. We've used it topically, we've used it in waters, and we've done it with eyedroppers. Um, if you don't know what I mean when, when I say eyedropper, you can get these bottles um, and you can actually buy eyedroppers that connect into your essential oil bottles. Um, if you want to use an eyedropper or you can get eyedropper bottles where <clears throat> you can make your own blends uh, for blends that we're going to be talking about or things that we're going to be talking about. Um, so really, essentially, all all of those ways are are right. You know, putting it in the water or using an eyedropper or doing it topically is right. Um, Anne had a situation where she had a respiratory issue with one of her. It was a turkey, right? <clears throat> and, uh chicken i think chicken yeah. And turkey yeah and she used the breathe blend and you put it under their wings is that right yeah 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 okay so what i did was you want me to tell them yeah sorry <laughs> so what i did was um with the breathe blend which is your respiratory blend and it opens up your airways and it allows them to be able to clear up is um i just took fraction coconut oil a very 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 small amount basically two picked in two picked out rubbed it in there and you could still smell it so you know it's on there and it was applied directly underneath their wings, so back up in the skin area underneath their wings. So when they're roosting at night, and I actually took a little bit and rubbed it on their breast feathers as well too. So when they're roosting at night and they were tucking their heads in, they are able to still inhale it as well too. I mean, you can go as far as um, you know, diffusing it in your space, but I don't have an extension cord running out there, so it's definitely something that's applied topically. But you know, small amounts, small doses with uh, fraction coconut oil or regular coconut oil if you have it. You know, just applying it directly underneath where they're able to inhale on a regular basis throughout the night. And so that's a that's a way of topical or aromatic um, application to your chicken. Um, the breathe blend also helps topically on the skin of the chicken to actually absorb into the bloodstream. So, um, you know, minute amounts with obviously small livestock because they're much smaller than we are. Um, and said like too thick in, too thick out. You know, that type of of diet of dosing. Um, so that kind of goes top and aromatically your next form is ingestion so if you have to treat your chickens and it's a lot of chickens then obviously adding essential oils to their chicken water is right. the best that for you um a one gallon chicken water going by dosage of of that um for and you're going to need to change that water you know quite yeah. often yeah. Uh, because the essential oils begin to lose their potency or if you only have one chicken that has issues um, then obviously my my go-to route would be the eyedropper. And I would just make a, a blend, um, like we're going to talk to you about sauerkraut, of something like olive oil with your essential oils in there. And then you can just use the eyedropper very precisely with much efficacy um, with a drop or two in there. Um, so those are your way, means of, <clears throat> of treating your chicken either um, topically, aromatically, or ingesting it. Um, so that let, like that's the safety of it all <laughs> so that you know um, so let's go ahead and walk through the best essential oils to keep on hand for poultry do you want to start with that Anne? sure let me switch out of there sorry guys. okay so what we're looking at is we're gonna be um, these are things that you would actually want to keep in your first aid kit for that oregano definitely oregano it's an antibiotic and um, as well too. So for our area, we actually battle coccidiosis on a regular basis. We're not cold enough. We barely ever freeze on the grounds that we're in. And um, so the breeding ground is just continual here because it's mud all the time. So oregano oil along with um, colloidal silver is a basic for us throughout, ma mainly we're talking once the rainy season hits. We have rain nine months out of the year. Breathe blend, of course, for respiratory. If you have um, a bird that's just, um, displaying signs of illness, you know, in regards to, you know, just a little bit of wheezing, separate her from the flock, of course, and you're going to want to definitely treat her in that process. Uh, the breathe one is excellent. Very small amount of, uh, is goes a long way with you guys on that. Um, a lot of people will say, go ahead and do vet RX. You know, it's a great beginner. But if you want to look into something that you're going to keep on hand for yourself and your family, breathe is one of the great items that you're going to be able to use. Thyme, another antibacterial, antiviral, anti-everything. Thyme is something that should be either given 
um, fresh anyways to your flock. But if you're not going to do it and you're looking to treat something, thyme is one of those items. Yeah, and Mel thyme is a great anti-parasitic too. That's one of the reasons we keep it on hand. There you go. And then Mel and Luca, of course, it, it's your cleaning. It's your antiseptic that's going to do the cleaning. Hilichrysum is great for blood stop. I had to remove um, one of our hen's crops. Because, uh, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me take Oh, my uh, non-crop comb. <laughs> One of our hens comb because um, she had she was in the brooder with her chicks, and for some reason she had, I think she was defending the chicks from somebody that was walking by. It stuck her head through the breeder, um, the breeding wire, um, the brooder wire, and had pulled back and tore her crop. So I actually had to remove the crop, and the helichrysum was great comb, in order. The comb. the comb. Why am I saying crop? The comb was perfect. The helichrysum is great to treat the comb. There we go. Um, let's move on to the next one. Lavender. <laughs> lavender is <laughs> lavender is excellent for very many reasons. I mean, we talked about using lavender as a soother, but lavender is actually one of those great items that is antiseptic, antiviral. Um, it can be antifungal as well too. And um, when you're treating something as simple as bumble fit, lavender is on there um, on the list for items such as that. So yeah, lavender is great. It's great for calming, soothing. But once you get into the oil of aspect of it, it is what it is. It's going to be used as medicinal purpose on there. Um, those are our top, top ones that we would say have on hand at all times. And remember, when we talk oils, we're not talking grocery store oils. We're not talking Amazon oils. We're not talking oils from a company that um, is not tested. Okay. Livestock animals as a whole, you, they're very, very sensitive. Their genetic makeup does not tolerate it very well. You have to know what you're doing in regards to what you're giving them. And it has to be 100% pure, pure and clean. So don't take the chance of buying an oil from a company that you cannot get a report based back on them. And I, I don't say this because I want you to necessarily join doTERRA. I do, but I don't want you to have to feel like you have to have doTERRA. I'm saying this because if I'm advising you on something like this, please use caution in regards to what oils you're selecting for your animals. And, you know, it oils are not regulated in any way, shape, or form. Just keep that in mind. Find a company that's going to offer you a report based on when it was, where it was grown, how it was harvested, how it was distilled, when it reached American soil, and everything. And it's all third-party tested away from doTERRA as a whole. So... Those oils can be verified through report by scanning the QR code on your bottle. So keep that in mind, you guys. Yeah. And, you know, basically the same quality that you would want to use for your family, you want to use for your livestock too. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it's livestock I can use. Right. No, that's not true. If you treat your livestock the same exact way that you're treating your animals because quality really does make a difference. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> did you talk about Melissa? Did I put? Melissa? I didn't. You have Melissa as the next point. So, so. Melissa, we were going to keep separate because you know there's the, Melissa oil is expensive. Um, it certainly is, you know, an investment, and I call it an investment because when you need yeah. it, you, you need it. Mm -hmm. um, but Melissa oil is another good one if you can keep it on hand, if you can afford to keep it on hand for you and your family. Um, it's a really big chicken keeping oil. It's antiseptic, antibacterial, and antiviral, which is huge. And probably one of the biggest reasons why uh, Melissa is kept in chicken keepers cabinets because of the antiviral aspect. When we're talking about things like avian flu and other viral illnesses, right. these are, this is an, it, it, Melissa is a powerhouse and it costs so much because it is a powerhouse oil. You're not going to get the same quality or outcome from a, a, you know, a Melissa tincture or a Melissa infused oil or something like that. The reason essential oils are so powerful is because they're so potent and so strong. Um, so that's one of the reasons that, you know, people like to keep that Melissa oil on hand. Um, and Melissa oil was one of the ones that we actually would suggest for your evac pack as well, too. So right. if you want to revisit that, Melissa oil should be in your evac pack, too. Right. Um, so those are our top oils for chicken keeping. Obviously there are tons of oils that you might use. You know, you might yeah. come into an issue on your homestead that well, we've never come into an issue on. These are just, you know, these are situations where you would more likely use these oils rather than any other oils. Amy, um, I'm sorry. Wait, uh, we didn't add, um, Cobiba on the list. Oh, Sorry, we didn't. Go ahead. You can talk about that. Okay. So the Kofiba oil is a great, great anti, um, it's a great uh, anti-inflammatory and it's actually can be used to help with bumblefoot as well too. 
Um, so that is one of the oils and it's, you guys, it's one of the top oils to have, not only for livestock as a whole, but for yourself as a whole. I use it a lot to um, help with my RA. And so, um, so with that on there, in regards to poultry, you can use it for something such as bumblefoot. You can use it something as um, when they have um, runny poop, you know, it, where it's just not something that they ate or something like that. It, it could be used on and on and on and on. So definitely an oil to have on hand. doTERRA just um, incorporated that this past year um, onto our list. But honestly, I don't think I could survive without that oil as a whole. So definitely look into that oil as well. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to walk you through about, let's see, one, two, three, four scenarios. Um, we're going to talk about cuts and scrapes, bumblefoot, sour crop, and runny poops. Say so some things that we've already mentioned, you know, in this, but we haven't told you necessarily how to treat them. So I'm going to take the cuts and scrapes thing because that's like my yeah. thing. <laughs> we, you know, we have had uh, chickens attacked either by raccoons or bear or just freak incidences of chickens, you know, having scrapes and cuts. And that was probably one of my first incidences with using essential oils. We actually had, um, we have leghorns. And so leghorns, when they get into a fight, they can rip chunks out of their combs and everything else. Um, <laughs> Josh just said, just came in for Bumblefoot and Ronnie Poop. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> let me see. so, okay. So my, my oils for cuts and scrapes are lavender, tea tree, oregano, and helichrysum. And I think you can get a, a glimpse of why, since those are, we just told you about those. But, um, you know, for example, I gave this example last week too. We had a chicken who had literally bone showing on her back. You know how thin chicken skin is. And I thought she wasn't going to make it. She already had fly strike. So, you know, the blood was already dried and it was just a mess. And so um, we took, I took a rag, a warm compress, and this is another way that you can apply essential oils either to yourself or your animals. Um, I took a warm compress and added it, added essential oils to it. So tea tree, oregano, lavender, um, and helichrysum because helichrysum is great for generating new tissue. Um, and so, and oregano, I don't know if I said oregano or not. So the tea tree is a natural cleanser, natural antiseptic. The oregano is a natural antibiotic. The lavender, natural antiseptic as well. And it helps soothe in the long run. And then the helichrysum was um, good for the skin regeneration of the, the cut and scrape. Um, this wasn't just a little tiny cut and scrape, though you can use it for that too. This was a huge, massive amount of, you know, fat and bone and nasty showing. Um, she was basically completely and in, in three days, her skin had closed back up something that probably would have required stitches. Um, it closed back up on its own. It regenerated on its own and it was a, an exceptionally su great success story. And the way we did that was I just did it the same every time after I cleaned it out the, the first initial time I used that warm compress, put the oils on it and then rubbed that rag over, over the scraped area. Um, when it began closing up, I, I made a blend out of the fractionated coconut oil and those same oils. And I would use just a Q-tip and go over the skin to keep it healthy, to keep it, to keep it moist so that the skin continued to regenerate. She stayed with our flock. She didn't get any more fly strike. The, the oils actually killed and deterred her flies from coming back. Um, and she was good as new within a week. Like I didn't have to take her to the vet. I didn't have to call her, which was a good thing because she was, she was Junior's favorite chicken and she healed up exceptionally well. I would venture to say she healed up better than if we had given her anything like blue coat or vet mm -hmm. you know, any of this stuff that you see now. Um, so cuts and scrapes, if for nothing else, if for nothing else on your homestead, keep essential oils on for those cuts and scrapes because those are inevitable. I mean, they're just completely inevitable. Um, so the next one is bumblefoot. Do you want to talk about that or do you want me to talk about it? Uh, go, you I can go it. ahead. I, I can give you the oils for it. Do you want to talk? You talk about it and I'll give the oil list. Okay. Okay. So, so we had a few years ago, um, I had a friend who, a neighbor actually, she said, there's something wrong with my chicken foot. I don't know what's wrong with it. And, um, she brought the chicken over to me. <laughs> And she, you know, asked me to take a look at it and it was bumblefoot. And so we were able, but there wasn't a, um, bumblefoot is basically when your chicken steps on something or gets a cut or scrape and, um, an infection starts in their foot. And so 
Typically, a big scab will pop up and you have to pull the scab off and squeeze all the infection out and get all of that kernel and everything out. Um, but this hadn't got to that point yet. This was an inflammation, um, something that wasn't seen yet. And so we were able to actually wrap the foot up when put, we put a carrier oil on and put um, oregano, tea tree, lavender. And there are, there are other oils that you can put too. Anne's going to go down that list. And we wrapped it up and she changed the wrap twice a day. Chicken was still able to stay with the flock. Chicken was still able to walk because we had wrapped it with, uh, you know, in between the toes. And within two weeks, doing that twice a day, within two weeks since it was an infection, the infection was completely gone. It never came to a head and the chicken was fine. Um, we had a chicken with Bumblefoot once. It was so nasty. <laughs> and she did have a scab. And instead of taking her to the vet or any god awful thing that would cost a large amount of money, we were able to, I was able to do surgery on her. So I was able to pull the scab off, which wasn't quite enough. So I did put an incision in her foot where the scab was. I squeezed out all of the infection. And then at that point, it needs to be cleaned out extremely well. And that's where water and essential oils came in really well. Um, we cleaned it out with the essential oils. We cleaned it out with water. Um, and then at that point, she has a gaping hole in her foot. So, you know, like, what do you do then? So I was able to pack it with um, an, our antibacterial ointment. And I, I make antibacterial ointment. You could use something commercial like Neosporin, but why would you do that when you're using essential oils? So we make right. our own antibacterial ointment. And I will give you that, guys, that um, this can be used on humans and animals. See? Um, and this is what it looks like. It looks exactly like Neosporin. Exactly. Um, and you can use it. I packed the foot full of it and around it and then wrapped it up. And again, she was able to stay with the flock, go about her business like normal, and she was completely fine. We did that until um, and treated with the oils until the symptoms went away and until her her foot started closing back up. And surprisingly enough for me, chickens' feet heal really quickly, which was yeah. a big surprise to me because you know they're walking around and even wrapped up, they can still get dirty. And so we were cleaning it out, but um, it healed really, really quickly. So. Go ahead and tell them what types of oils we can use for bumblefoot because that's one of the big issues with chicken keepers. Okay, so of course it's um, the there's there it's treated in different degrees. So if you have a minor where you're noticing that first case scenario before it actually starts calving up and you want to just treat the actual area itself, you could do what is called just the spraying, right? You're going to water mist it, spray it, and you can use frankincense and um, saliva. Um, as well to do that. Um, Cobiba is actually ingestible. So if you wanted to go ahead and treat the infection from inside out, because it is a staff at that point, you can um, actually apply the Cobiba into drinking water. Um, so those will be the first line of defense. So if you're getting to be where Amy says that you need to actually treat the actual area heavily by packing it, by, by applying the items, the oils to a gauze and taping it on there, you're looking at Kabiba, frankincense, helichrysum, lavender, lavender, marjoram, myrrh, um, and then peppermint, blue tansy, vetiver, is, and uh, wintergreen are great options for that if you're going to do it individually. So as you can tell, there, um, there are going to be different lines of offense. If you defense, I'm sorry, if you're going to start at something that is just something minor where you just recognize the symptoms to something a little bit heavier. You can use blends. There are certain blends that actually work really great with it. And then if not the blends, then you can turn around and use individual oils. Sometimes, um, personally, I, I like blends because it carries a little bit of everything. However, with blends, you need to know what's in your blends. And when we say blends, if you watch this the last time, when we say blends, there are uh, just a combination of oils some oils that Tatera carries as an individual oil, single oil, but some that we don't carry at all because they are just too expensive to be able to purchase on hand, number one, and they don't distill very easily. So it's, you know, factor back and forth, you know, how, how can we harvest and distill in uh, environmentally safe way to turn around to the cost factor of everything. So know what's in your blends because there are some things in blends that are just not okay for livestock. So that's the first thing you've got to recognize. Um, make sure whoever you are working with oils with knows the difference between what's okay and safe in a blend for livestock versus what's not. Right. Okay. And so then um, from there, if you really wanted to look into it, you can go 
I lost my page. Hold on. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, you know, with it, you can do, um, again, we're going back to the helichrysum. You're going back to the um, uh, cobaya, and you're going back to frankincense. Those are great inside the wound cleaner. The melaleuca inside there as well, too, if you needed to pack it. So I think Amy talked about that. Um, so did you get all the ones that I listed? I'm so yeah. sorry. I think I read them really fast. Okay. Okay. Um, on Guard, which is a doTERRA blend, is a great one to offer as well, too, in regards to that. Right. Okay. So that's Bumblefoot. So the next is Sauerkraut. Do you want to yep. use Sauerkraut? Yes. yes. I lost my page. Hold on. I thought I marked it. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the list that we wrote up. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, I found it. <laughs> okay, crop. So sour crop, as you know, um, the first thing you want to do is you want to release. If you guys don't know how to do that, definitely figure out, you know, there's lots of things you could do. You want to release what's in there, that, that yuckiness that's built up in there. Um, it needs to be done very cautiously. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already done it. Um, you know, turn your bird upside down, massage it. A lot of people will say, just go ahead and give olive oil to help out with that. But you have to be very careful because the olive oil can actually go rancid inside there as well too. So keep that in mind as you are, um, reading online things that you should be doing um just helping them remove what's in there and keeping that crop empty basically allowing it to dry out is what you're going to do is going to be your best but you know there are some days i've had um when i first started chicken keeping i had a hen with sauerkraut sauerkraut i can't talk this morning <laughs> she ate a lot of sauerkraut and got a lot of sauerkraut so so uh um, so she had sauerkraut. I was able to just go ahead after one day of just constantly inducing vomiting from her. She was fine the next day. I didn't have to do anything else for her. But, you know, there are going to be those hands that are just persistent and they just can't get rid of it, even after withholding the food and everything like that, that you want to treat them. Digestive Zen is an item um, that works really well for uh, that issue. And then uh, on top of that, you're going to look at the on guard um, as well, too. So those are the first line of defense. So you have your um, digestive end from the Terra and your on guard from the Terra. Those are the two that you really want to look into using from there. Um, again, it's going to be um, ingested. Amy will say Amy will suggest definitely using the dropper. Um, but, you know, you if you're unsure, OK, this is where your skills have to come into play in regards to keeping poultry. If you are unsure in regards to how to properly use a dropper to force the liquid down, you can go ahead and just do the beak dunk, right? So you're going to dunk their beak in, kind of scoop their head up, allow them to scoop the water and digest it from there. You can do it three or four times. Um, with a dropper, you have to make sure that you're not going to cause an issue where it's going to cause um, pneumonia issue later because you've actually, in, uh, help me out, my words, you are actually um, aspirated it. Aspirated. So, you know, there you go. so, yeah, in other words, a dropper, you know, you can use a dropper and put it into their mouth. Um, but some people try to like jab the dropper down mm -hmm. their throat. And mm -hmm. in what reality, what they're doing is they're actually breathing they're aspirating they're breathing in right. the oil and that's not good for their for their lung lining and so when you're using a dropper if you're comfortable with it only if you're comfortable with it you know just put it almost like a beak dunk just put it inside their beak and they'll they'll naturally take it down you'll see their yeah. tongue start taking it down um otherwise you can do what anna's saying and put it in water and do the beak drop thing okay so keep that in mind so um the first line of defense like we said was going to be the the digestive end and the um on guard Single oils um, that you want to look at are going to be um, uh, uh, juniper, lavender, lemon, marjoram, um, oregano, patchouli, peppermint, spearmint, tarragon, and thyme. And there's your thyme again, right? So your thyme is in there. Um, and remember, these things can be given on a dried basis as well, too. You know, if you have it in the garden and you uh, – I, I'm a big believer that if you're going to give it fresh, mine don't like to really peck it and eat it they they right. play with it more than anything so i have a tendency to take any herb that i'm giving them i'll tear it up and add it to their food or i'll just scrape it off of the um the wooded part of the actual herb itself i mean the idea of having them peck at it is beautiful and it's really great photo office opportunity right. for you however in truth they're really not going to consume it as well as if you mix it in with their feet so right. if you're going to do anything in regards to giving it to them just scrape it off and give it to their feet they'll eat it better that way um and then Again, with the uh, we talked about how to apply in that sense. 
um, you know, just just with it, just be really careful with it. You know, watch it, monitor it, make sure that if you are going to force vomit that you're doing it very carefully. Don't hold them upside down very long in, in order to do that. So definitely force vomit and then give the oils because the digestion is actually going to coat their whole crop area. So that's going to help them in a run, a long run. And then withhold food continually too until the healing process starts with them. Right. All right. Um, here's a reminder. We are doing a giveaway for a kit today. Did we decide oh, we are. what we're doing? No. Okay. So <laughs> we forgot to talk about that. I, we did. I'm going to give away one of these introductory kits then. Um, we okay. gave away five of these last week. We're giving away one of them today. And this includes peppermint, lemon, and lavender. These are really great go-tos for your homestead, your, your family, or your livestock. We have talked about all three of these today. So um, we will give one of these away at the end. And so you have to keep watching live and you have to pay attention because we're going to ask a question um, in regard to, you know, what you've learned today. So just putting that in there. Okay. So the next thing is diarrhea or runny poop and chicken. So do you want to go let, ahead and do that one too? Yeah. Let me get there again. See, I lost it. And before you go on, um, okay, go ahead. Let me find the it. Page, go ahead and tell them about that book that you're reading from. Oh, okay. okay. So this book, it's an expensive book. You guys, it does cost quite a bit of money. Um, it's the, um, it's the animal death reference and it's essential oils for, um, animals. It does cover just about every livestock that's underneath there. Um, it is written by a holistic veterinarian. Um, so, it, you know, it, you're going to come back with a lot of people who, um, are going to be argumentative in regards to that, but here's the base of where Amy and I come from is, is that we're homesteaders. Number one we it's not that we don't care for our animals in regards to allowing them to get treated by a vet a lot of the times the vets in my area are not as close as i need them to be to be able to treat my livestock and to be honest with you i don't raise backyard chicken i'm pets i don't i raise livestock and um i don't take my chickens to a vet i'm sorry i don't and i'll probably get booed here a lot but what's but, the name of the book again it's the um, ADR, the Animal Desk Reference, Essential Oils for Animals, okay. written by Melissa Shelton. Okay, so we as homesteaders choose to treat our livestock as independently as I can. Um, I won't say that I don't resort to a vet. Um, for my larger livestock, such as my goats, I do have a veterinarian that um, does come and help me out with them. So, um, you know, it, it's just you have to pick and choose when you're going to do it. And anything that you can try to treat yourself is great. If I kept backyard animals or if I was a sanctuary, then it would be a lot different for me in regards to um, having a vet on hand for my poultry, but I do treat my poultry independently. And it's not that I don't value their lives. It's, it's one of those things that you have to determine as a homesteader, which balance that you want to go in. Okay. Um, that book is actually on sale right now. So, oh yeah. So if anybody wants to go get it, I'll put the link. I put the link in the chat and then I put it, I'll put it below when it's done processing too. Okay. Um, and then, okay. Now I was supposed to be looking up. Sorry. Now I've got to go find it because I got distracted. <laughs> Flipping. Sorry, you guys bear oh, with me. These are things that we don't memorize. Okay. We still need references. Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. It, you know, typically I found when you do preventative measures and I mean, obviously there's things you can't, you can't avoid, but you know, you typically, if you have, if you're raising a healthy flock of chickens, you're not going to need a lot of these things, you know, right. but these are the most common things that even healthy flocks can run into. That's why we're talking about them today. You know, there are certainly freak incidences and it's major issues that can come up with your poultry. Um, that's why we encourage you to, to join and then we can add you to our group because that's what we talk about. We talk about homesteading things and more in-depth conversations there. That's why you need books like this that can, you can have it on hand for reference so that you can go back and look and see, okay, I've got this freak thing happening. There's some virus running rampant throughout my flock. What do I do now? Um, so these are great, you know, more in-depth things to look in. Today, we're just kind of scratching the surface. So, okay, so next. Okay, so we are going to go back. So every once in a while, you will have a bird that just has runny poop. There's nothing, I mean, there's just, it does. It happens every once in a while. We're not talking about your whole flock getting into something that causes something like vent bleed or anything like that. It's just one bird that just, just does. 
she'll go through a good spell and all of a sudden she'll have it again. So, I mean, if, as you're thinking about it, you know that that bird somewhere along the line is not healthy, okay? But you may have that bird may be your favorite and it may be your pet and it may be worth your investment to keep her on hand. She could be your best broody, whatever the case is that you want to keep her and you want to help her and you want to make her comfortable. Um, you know, of course, bathing her, cleaning her up is the best thing to prevent fly strike and just in general from preventing pecking issues from other birds going back at her and things like that. But you want to make her comfortable as well, too. So once again, we're going to go back and resort to the blend called Digestive End, which is going to actually help the internal uh, in, intestinal tract as well, too. And that is going to help soothe her in that sense. And then again, On Guard. On Guard is going to be the immune booster, immune booster for her and to help her out. So those are going to be digested again, as Amy had said, in regards to eyedropper or bill beak dipping <laughs> I'm tired still. Beak dipping into the water so um so those can be done in that sense and then if if okay it, it, if you have a whole flock that has that glee you know it had to do something with the environment or the feed had been moldy of some sort so you will want to treat your whole entire flock at that point with something okay so if you need to reach out and do that whole thing you can do the same thing that the digestive zen or the on guard but then something as deep as the um the purified blend would be a great one for that um digestive zen in the water again on top of that and um and put it in there. Also, another option, and I know we're talking about oils here, but since someone I was helping someone else, colloidal silver is a great option for you as well too to be able to use in their water. And um, it can go a lot longer because you can brew it. Um, if you're not brewing your own, I would not suggest you go out and buy it because it's quite expensive if we're going to buy it on Amazon. Um, but if you are brewing it on your own, that is a great option for vent fleet for a larger flock, even for an individual bird. But I just said in beef in their water again will help. And that's an oil that you're going to carry on hand as well too. Overeating for yourself, gassy problems for yourself, for your children, um, just overall tummy issues. Um, uh, leaky gut is great as well too so digestive is something you'll always have on hand at some degree or another and so is on guard because it's a moon boosting blend um so those are your two if you're going to have to deal with something in regards to that one bird or a whole issue of um just the um bentley single oils i didn't list do you want me to list single oils for that real quick um yeah you can go ahead and listen basil lavender lemon melon luca uh patchouli peppermint spearmint tangerine tarragon and thyme are great oils for that and a lot of those oils are actually listed in the blends and i think that's probably yeah. Yeah. that's what the on guard blend especially so tarragon and thyme of course are not however my back is hurting on the couch however um the uh you know a lot, the basil is not in the spearmint but those are things that you can actually mix and to be honest with you guys keep in mind because these are all listed on here you don't have to use every single one of those oils to treat okay so just because i listed single oils doesn't mean you go out and you know dig up all those single oils what what it is about anything holistic is, is it's going to be it's a crapshoot right it's going to you know work and you've got to sometimes adjust it and modify it so if you started off with something like mm, something as simple as uh patchouli peppermint spearmint tarragon and thyme and tangerine and it doesn't work tweak it tweak it to where it needs to work that's anything in regards to whatever you're doing these are the basis of everything that works even if you're using herbs you're still going to need to tweak it um to find the best remedy for what you're addre uh, addressing for yourself or your livestock so just keep in mind because we list these things doesn't mean you use all those things it just means these are options for what you can use and it should be tweaked and adjusted all the way across the board Okay, so those are kind of like our top four to five things that you might encounter, um, you know, essential oils that you should, should keep on hand. In case you encounter them, we will list that information below for you. Um, I want to touch a little bit about chicks and essential oils. We have seen this before. Anne and I have both talked about this before. You know, a lot of people who are getting into holistic um, remedies, they they think they can give the same exact things and the same exact treatments mm -hmm. to as they can adult chickens. And we have to remind you that, um, you know, even adult chickens, you're giving a very minute amount of these essential oils to these chickens. 
And then you're taking this little tiny chick and you're trying to dilute that even more and it's almost impossible. And so with chicks, yes, you can certainly use essential oils, but in, in my opinion, you should right. try to really not use mm -hmm. them and use more herbs and other preventative measures so that they don't get sick and they stay pretty healthy. And um, that, and, and I'm going to add to that too, is, is that, you know, I, an infant, we're talking an infant here, should never, ever, ever, ever be used with essential oils. Never, okay? They are, right, they're still developing in every, I mean, they're born, they're developed, right? But they are still developing. They're being exposed, they're being developed. I am not one of those essential oils um, individuals that's going to tell you, oh, your baby was born, yay, wait, she has a little bit of gas at three months old, go ahead and give her an oil. Sorry, you guys, you're not going to find that from me. Um, I, you know, Amy and I don't push oils in regards to just because we want you to apply them. We push the safety of oils and, you know, I have a huge faith in doTERRA and a huge faith that they work. And, um, I turn my skeptical husband into them as well too, but oils as a whole have to be used very cautiously. And if anybody tells you, oh, use this oil on your newborn baby, you got to run. I mean, run as fast as your legs are going to carry you because that's not true. It's not in any way, shape or form. You have to be very careful. Their skin is so super sensitive that even in a heavy dilution, you're not going to be able to dilute a pure oil to a degree that's going to be very comfortable for them. Okay. Be careful. Use them with caution. You're not going to hear us ever promoting anything for a child that's under, definitely under four months old. Um, and only certain oils will I suggest anything from four months to six months old. So with that said, back to the chicks or back to any livestock that is just newly born, please just use a little bit more caution in regards to that. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So now we're going into the fun part of essential oils. So we're talking about, you know, using your essential oils for coop sprays or Ooh. the antibacterial ointment. And again, you can, a lot of these recipes are in my book. I am sharing two recipes with you. Um, and then, Anne, I don't know if you had any other recipes um that were that you wanted to do so someone's asking how about myrrh for the umbilical cord um you know <laughs> um you know i i'm gonna say no i'll what i'll say it i'll say no no sorry you guys no yeah myrrh is myrrh in itself is a very hot oil i mean even as an adult i use myrrh in my um in my face serum that i use and uh, even at that point, myrrh is so tough on the skin. I am not a believer that you should be using anything like that. You know, I, I don't. Myrrh is so tough to use as a whole. Even myrrh in, as an adult, the dosage is very minimal on that. Myrrh is used quite often in livestock care. Um, but for an infant, no. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't agree to that. Right. Yeah. It's just... You know just using it safely and i think that's the biggest thing that is essential oils and herbs and stuff are great but there is a safety you know it is still medicine it's right still, you wouldn't douse your child in tylenol you know so you don't want to douse your child in in essential oils that are you know that could potentially i would feel i would feel a lot more comfortable using cleo silver for an um, umbilical cord before anything else um, and there's a lot of reasons and there's a lot of um, backing up as to why. Uh, at that point, if you do have a newborn baby and you want to keep that umbilical area clean, um, look into colloidal silver. If you're brewing it your own, you can actually make a salve out of the goop that's left over on the silver rod um, in that sense. Or just even spraying the umbilical cord with um, a, a colloidal silver is going to do a better job than essential oils. Right. Okay. So let's talk about herbal coop fresheners. So I have, these are the bottles that I use. I use a little bottle like this and it's glass. And so you can use it over and over again. You can use it for anything. I use these for my cleaning sprays. I use these for everything. Anything that I mix up, I use one of these glass bottles. I will link this below so you can find it um, on there. And then I just label it with one of these. This has water in it. I actually use this to spray my fodder with for my rabbits and chickens. Um, and so you can get a Sharpie or something to write on there. But so coop cleaner, I mean, do you have to have coop cleaner? No, you don't have to have <laughs> coop cleaner. Like I'm not like making up coop cleaner every single day to clean my chicken coop, you know. But not only does it work as a cleaner, it works as a freshener too. 
So you can, I have recipes where I use herbs to make a coop cleaner. Um, and then I have this recipe that actually uses essential oils to make the coop cleaner. Um, and it's not only, like I said, a clean spray, but it's, you know, it cleans, it freshens your coop up. Um, it can even help deter flies and stuff like that. Um, but let's just be honest and face it that it's not going to last a long time. Like chickens poop in their chicken coop, you know, so it's not going <laughs> to smell like lemongrass all day long. But it is nice, you know, when you're trying to freshen up your coop, when you're cleaning your coop, when you're spraying down roosting bars or whatever. Um, so I use tea tree, lemongrass, oregano, clove, and sage. Uh, I don't think doTERRA has a sage oil, right? Do they? doTERRA does not have sage, no. Yeah. So you're going to have to get that from somewhere like Mountain Rose Herbs or another organic company like that, or you can omit it completely. But you can pretty much make any kind of cleaner. I chose those oils because of the beneficial properties that they have. Um, you can use any kind of oil, pretty much, except you need to learn how to mix it. So it has water and witch hazel, or you can even use vodka or alcohol. But who wants to waste their vodka on coop cleaner? <laughs> um, so, so I use so I use witch hazel, and the reason for that is because it helps bind the oils together with the water. And so, what you're going to do is you're going to take your bottle, you're going to fill it most of the way up with water. This is how I do it, and then you're going to add your oils. So it's about six to ten drops, depending on the oil. Um, I only do like three drops of sage and two drops of clove because those are more powerful, powerful oils. For my cleaning oils like oregano and tea tree, I'll add more of those and less of the just good smelling stuff. So once you have your oils in there, then I fill it up the rest of the way, which is like a quarter or an eighth of the way with witch hazel. And then every time you spray it, you're going to shake it up and then you're going to spray it. Um, this is actually how I make my air freshener too. And so we make bathroom spray that way. And... Um, you can make it anyway. And you're going to find that one cleaner, you can even use it in your house, not just your chicken coop. You can use it in your house, uh, you know, around your kids, whatever. But that is your basic how to. So, you know, you're going about this part up with water, then adding your oils, then going the rest of the way with witch hazel. Um, if you're trying to make it a really, like, if you're deep cleaning your coop, you can add um, some dish liquid to it, like some organic, you know, non-scented dish liquid to it and spray your coop down and scrub it really good. Um, but if you're if it's just an air freshener or cleaner, you can use it that way. Um, I will link that recipe below when this is done processing. But the next thing was that antibacterial ointment that I was telling you about. Now, this stuff is amazing. It's really easy to clean. Of course, somebody's calling me. Hold on. And um, it's really easy to make. And we use this on ourselves. We don't buy Neosporin anymore. We use this and, um, or you can use it on your livestock. It's safe for all livestock. So this recipe that you are going to have to go buy a recipe. I can tell you what the recipe is, but you're really going to need to write it down or print it out. And I will link it below for you. Um, and this probably deserves a video in and of itself because I can tell you how to make it, but you're not going to remember. <laughs> um, so it's, it's three ounces of calendula infused oil. And, you know, in the recipe, I'll tell you how to make that. That smells super good, too. Um, and a half ounce of beeswax. And what you're going to do is you're going to you're gonna melt down your beeswax, and you're going to add the infused oil and mix it up. Then you're going to add 10 drops each of tea tree essential oil, oregano essential oil, and vitamin E oil. Um, the tea tree and oregano are naturally antiseptic and naturally antibacterial. Um, but you're not going to add those until the the melted mixture that you just made cools down because you don't want that heat to ruin your essential oils. Um, the vitamin E oil that you're adding helps regenerate skin. You could also add helichrysum, but mm -hmm. we use this on cuts and scrapes and bruises and bumps. And so we're trying to be a little less invasive with essential oils. Um, so we add vitamin E oil because it helps keep the skin moist and helps regenerate the skin. You can also add, which we do add, a tablespoon of Manuka honey. Um, the Manuka honey acts as a natural preservative for your uh, ointment, and it's also naturally antibiotic and antibacterial. You oh, I love that. Yeah, you could essentially just use Manuka honey, to be honest. You really could. Yeah. yeah. But um, this was really easy. It's nice to make because it it's not sticky. 
you know, it goes on like, like here, I'll just put it. I mean, it's literally like a fat. I mean, you can't even it just it dries just like Neosporin and other ointments. And it smells really good too. It smells like honey. It smells like beeswax, honey. Um, so it's so it's really easy. Infused oil, beeswax, tea tree, oregano, vitamin E, and honey. You melt it all down, put it all together, and then I put it in a jar. I'll put it in a mason jar like this, and you let it cool down, and it doesn't turn into a salve. It stays an ointment, and then you just whip it up with you know with your hand or um, whatever, and then I put it in these little tins, and it makes a lot at one time. So you can give the additional stuff away to friends or family. Now, this salve you can keep for up to one year. So you can whip it up, put it in your tent and keep it in your medicine cabinet for a year after a year everything kind of starts diminishing you know the honey is still great the honey had acted as a preservative for you for the year but your essential oils really stop losing their potency as is the vitamin e oil so you're going to want to replenish this in your chicken medicine cabinet every year but this is really great you can add it it's great for combs it's great, it's great for you know minor cuts and scrapes um if your chickens get frostbite it's really great to put on their combs and the walls for frostbite um not only does it protect but it also keeps the other chickens from pecking at them um, because they don't like the taste and it's safe for them to taste which is awesome um so there's a lot of great benefits to having essential oils and making things like ointments and salves and coop fresheners um, and they're really easy to make. And once you make a batch, I mean, it's pretty much good for the whole food. So I'm going to add those recipes down in the description below once the video oh. And then, um, oh, man. what? Am I still there? Yeah. All right. I lost the, um, I lost the chat. Oh, never mind. I found it. No. <laughs> I'm um, trying to, hey, I'm trying to answer, um, I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm so sorry, Igor. Igor, I'm trying to answer her question. Oh, I'm safe for cats. Um, yeah, I'm trying to answer that. Sorry. Did we talk about this last week? Do we make a little bit, not too much. Yeah. Do you want to touch on that real quick? Yeah. So essential oils and cats as a whole, there's a huge misconception. Cat, um, cat's anatomy is very, very different, of course, than <clears throat> any other anatomy out there. The feline anatomy is very different. Uh, so as a whole, Mel and Luca, I would not use it topically in regards to treating a lot because there are other oils in regards to being able to address like minor cut scrapes and whatnot. Uh, however, um, I do use Mel and Luca when I clean my bathrooms. I use that in colloidal silver depending on if I have a batch brewing at the time or not. Um, but Mel and Luca is generally what I do use. I do keep our cat food there as well, too, on top of my sink because my dogs will eat it otherwise and that's where I clean so it is not something and with her paws you know it's not wet as she's jumping on there but with her paws the impact on the paw is the pores are more open than anything else even on a human body your feet have more pores that are exposed than anywhere else so when you apply it you know we always say address the feet in regards to something like that uh so you know I don't give it to her in the water. Don't give it to her in regards to trying to clean a cut or a wound right away. It could be very deadly for them, but I wouldn't be afraid to use it as a whole. Um, I don't diffuse melaleuca anywhere in the house and I don't use it other than for cleaning or cleaning my cutting boards and things like that. So just be careful when you said that you said it correctly. Oh, I don't understand, but, um, you said his name, their name correctly. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so just be careful. I mean, there are oils like melaleuca is one of those oils that are is a sensitive oil to use around phenines. But, um, you know, it, it's being debunked more and more and more in regards to what cats can handle in regards to essential oils. Some people will go as far as to say you should never diffuse oils in front of cats. But here, here's the truth of the matter. If your pet does not tolerate the scent of an oil because it's affecting them anyway, they will leave the room and find another place to lay down. That's the truth of the matter. Animals are more sensitive towards anything else than humans are. A human will sit in a room even though it's making them uncomfortable, however, or your pet will not. So if there is something being diffused that my cat does not tolerate, she's not in this room. She will find someplace else to lay down or be. And in truth, I cannot remember an instance in the last three and a half, three years where um, 
my cat has left the room because of an oil that I've diffused. Well, and the so, reality is that with diffusers, diffusers only reach a certain amount of square footage in your house. Right. Anyhow. When you're using a diffuser, it's not infusing your whole house with these aromatic essential oils. Right. It's only generally consuming about 300 square feet of your, of your house. So, you know, unless you're, you're sticking a cat in a room and closing the door and diffusing right. it, you know, it's typically, there's no issue. You know, we have the same, the same conversation about dogs, you know, tea, it is tea tree toxic to dogs. Well, guess what? Tea tree is toxic to humans too. If you use, <laughs> yes. you know, if you use 60 drops of tea tree on your body, you're probably going to have toxicity of, of Melaleuca. Um, if you, you know, it takes 40 drops for, you know, I think it's like a 10 pound dog has to have like 40 drops of oil or something like that for it to even show signs of toxicity. And who in their right mind is going to do that? You know, so yes, there are precautions to be used, but there's a whole lot of scare tactics tactics out there that right. are being used too to deter people from using essential oils and herbs with their pets and animals. So do your research. Right. You know, safety is best, um, but don't believe all the hype. You know, yes, cats are a lot different than dogs. And but also we have this con conversation with dogs, too. And so just, you know, just use the oils properly and it'll be fine. You know, it's the same with medicine. Herbs and essential oils are the same as medicine. If you use an extremely low dose of medicine, it's not going to help you at all. It's not going to affect you. It's not going to help you. Literally, in order to to have a medicine, a modern pharmaceutical help you you have to be on the verge of taking too much of it in order for it to help you and you know doctors don't tell you that you're on the verge of taking too much Tylenol in order for it to help you you're on the verge of taking too much antibiotics in order for it to help you um and it's the same with herbs and essential oils you've got it you're kind of right on that line right where it's almost too much but it's not too much so you got to be safe with some essential oils and herbs where others are like you can use almost as much as you want to. So just do your research on the oil. And that's another good reason to join our group um, because these are questions that people ask constantly and that we're able to debunk. And it's nice to have a community of people. Um, our team really is like a little family because we can, we can talk about issues and be upfront and honest with each other and say, oh my gosh, I screwed up, don't do this. You know, there are things that we can help each other out on. And that's what it's going to take in order to bring to bring more awareness to how to use herbs and essential oils and that they do work. It's going to take little communities like ours to set the record straight and learn from each other. And so that kind of brings us into the closing of this whole essential oils and chickens um, class because we didn't want to go too far depth in depth into it. And, you know, an hour long class is long enough for us because we all have lives, right? Um, but if you have questions about, or if you're afraid that you may have questions in the future, um, we cannot stress you enough keeping herbs and essential oils on hand. Also, I got to do the giveaway. Don't let me forget about that. Um, and if you, you know, are, are really interested in treating your livestock, especially your chickens and your family naturally, it doesn't hurt to get a few bottles of oil and start using them and start learning how to use them. With doTERRA, you can join for just $35 for the year. Um, you don't have to buy a kit, though there are kits available at exceptional prices. Um, I do have the links right now in below where you can join. You don't ever have to sell anything, ever. You can sign up as a yeah. wholesale customer or you can sign up as an advocate if you want to sell. Neither is more expensive than the other. Um, but it, it, it's a great place to learn. And when you join our team, you get access to our group. So, you know, if you want to spend, I think it's like you only have to spend $50 to get points. Isn't that right? Correct. So, like, if you want to spend $50 worth of oils, you actually get points back to get more free oils. So, that's one of the great benefits about doTERRA. But, um, so all of that information is below. So, we do encourage you to sign up if you want access to that group so you can ask questions. But, for now, we are going to do the introductory kit. Um, oh, I'm going to kill my dog before it's over with. But. We have lavender, lemon, peppermint, and these are the five milliliter bottles that comes in the introductory kit. They are a great way to get started. So they're the little bottles, but you know, a little bit does go a long way. We talked about all these oils, but we need to figure out a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
what what would be a good question to test their knowledge if they were listening the whole time? I was really thinking about that just now too. <laughs> um, um let's go. Okay, let's go. Um hold on. Don't answer until we say go because we are okay. on delay. So we're gonna ask the question and then when we say go, you can start answering. So what is your question? How about giving us four basic do you like this question? You know where I'm going with this. Give us four basic oils that you should have on hand in your first aid kit um, uh, for emergency or not just emergency for everyday situations if you want to address it. Right. Four oils. I okay. think we listed so, seven. Four oils that we talked about in this in this episode for chickens. Um, four of them they have to be spelled right, and they have to be four that we talked about. <laughs> So, okay, are you ready? Because we're on like a 30 second delay. On your mark, get set, go. While they're doing that, I really got to sit down and read this book. It is really good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and order that book because it's on you sale right now. Good. And um, how much is that on sale for? I think it's $40. What? Yeah, it used to be like seventy dollars, right? Yeah. Okay. Wait. Oh, you got it! Yay! You got it. You got it. Tea tree, lavender, oregano, and Melissa were for good ones. So good one. we're the first one on my screen to get it. So if you can email me, I'm gonna put my email in here right now. Um, if you can email me your name and your address, I will get you one of these out. I'm actually sending them out tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't get to the post office this week, so last week's winners I'm sending out tomorrow. So I will send yours out tomorrow as well. So get me an email, and um, I will go ahead and mail that out to you. So awesome. Um, I'm going to open it up real quick for questions if anybody has yeah, questions. Let's do that. Um, oh, Pat. <laughs> Sorry, <yeah>. Pat. <laughs> if you have questions specifically about chicken health and essential oils, go ahead and ask that. And then if you guys wouldn't mind telling us, um, we're going to try to do these every other week, not every week. Um, if you want to let us know anything in the future that you want to learn about, that would be awesome. And I would also suggest um, we do um, we do blue, what we call purple box. Well, I, I'm going to start. I would like to start incorporating this with actually our whole entire Facebook team right. and whatnot is the purple box reveal. So what that is, is, is that um, doTERRA ships in these uh, cardboard boxes that have purple on them and everybody calls it the purple box day. So purple boxes is, um, it's a great way to learn the types of oils and why we're incorporating them. Um, like for example, I had 300 points, which is basic over 300 points, which is about $300 worth of points, um, that I needed to use up. And so I normally don't buy from the back of the doTERRA book only because you know, I'm a homesteader. I believe in having individual oils and creating my own product to accommodate what I need on that. But I went ahead and I um, I went ahead and I uh, ordered the um, the the whole facial cleansing kit because I've been asked about that so many times and I couldn't answer to the product itself. So I'm going to be doing a purple box reveal for my free product, uh, over three hundred dollars worth of stuff. Um, to be able to answer questions on to my to our people who follow us on our private group on um, what this is about, what it does, and where it's at. But then I'll also do a purple box reveal in regards to what I went ahead and replenished my um, apothecary cabinet with in regards to my oils and why I incorporated those specific oils onto the homestead again. Right. Or they might be a new oil for me. But um, so you know, just if you join our group, you'll actually have a little more exclusive as to why maybe going into spring I incorporated more oregano, more thyme, or more on guard, um, and how it affects my homestead inside the house with my human people as well as the livestock that are outside as well right. too. So yeah, those are just the perks for um for being with us in regards to that. Right. Yeah, there are a lot of, of good per perks, and Ann and I have been so busy that we've got, we kind of neglected the group for a couple months, but we're yeah. trying to start back up again. So, um, but yeah, so I think that's it. I do check out the ADR book because Nana just said it's forty four thirty forty four thirty. I remember when it first came out; it was like seventy five dollars or something like that. So that's a really good price. I don't know how long that price is going to be there. Um, so I will throw the link up again when. I get off here and I'll up, up, uh, update the description. 
Um, so do check that out if you're serious about it. Covers all livestock, not just chickens. And and um, there's a rabbit section in here. Yeah, Woo! so we have a lot of great information. And then um, if you are interested in joining, our links are below. It doesn't matter whether you join under Ann or under me. We're both on the same team. Um, so it's that's the beauty of it. Like we're not in competition or anything. Um, and then you get access to our our group on Facebook where we have a lot, we try to have lots of discussion. So as well as knowing um, if we release any blogs or anything like that, you guys right. do have access to it first before we share them out in the public and whatnot to allow you guys to contribute, give questions or anything like that to it. Yeah. And then also, you know, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We both have Facebook and Instagram. And for those of you who don't know, is a farm girl in the making. And then you can follow me. I'm just Amy Fuel Dash. No. Like on everything so facebook youtube instagram i have a twitter i don't know do you have a twitter i don't even use twitter. i have a twitter but it filters from feedbook to twitter yeah, so i don't even facebook. i don't even use it <laughs> which is kind of a shame because sometimes there's much more interesting things on there than there right. Is world, but, <laughs> right all right guys so that's it from us today i hope you guys thank you bye bye, -bye.